Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I decided to sit down and play a game that's been on my radar for a really long time now, and you guys have also been requesting that I give this one a go, and that is War Thunder. Uh, it's a free-to-play warplane simulator arcade mode. I don't really know what to classify it, but overall, it is, it is incredibly fun. Like, I've sat down for around... 12 hours now playing it in game and I, I knew that I needed to invest a lot of time like the first couple hours I had absolutely no idea what I was doing and I felt like if I made a video with only playing even five hours with it I really wouldn't have been able to have a good representation of what War Thunder is all about but over those 12 hours I grew to really appreciate this game like there is something about this title that grips you and, and is extremely addictive and I can't really pinpoint exactly why. Uh, it could be the gameplay, the gameplay is awesome, it could be the vast amount of customization, like there is an incredible amount of different planes you can choose from. It could be the little micromanaging you do with your different crews, it could be the different types of play styles. Like the overall package with War Thunder, while I don't think that it's for everyone, like this is not a game that I don't think everyone would, would enjoy, but if this is up your alley, like it is, it is simply phenomenal. And so when I first started playing, like I said, I had no no idea what I was doing. I was getting a couple of kills here and there, mainly just getting some assist. I was taking out some ground vehicles below, but for the most part, I just felt like a fish out of water. This isn't my comfort zone. I mainly play first person shooters, but uh, I quickly realized that there is a lot of depth here. They first start you off on a very stale map. Like when I first started, I was actually a little disappointed by the map selection. Like it's, it's pretty much just an open field. Like there's a couple of objectives down on the ground, but it was pretty much just everyone zipping around up above in an open space and you couldn't really hide from anyone like there wasn't any terrain that could block line of sight you just did some dog dog fights if you got killed you got killed and you would spawn back in uh, but then once I played for a couple hours that's when the game really started to open up there were new maps which look gorgeous by the way like this game looks stunning on some of these maps great vistas they start to introduce a couple of new game modes such as like domination if you play uh, the battlefield franchise where there are capture points down on the ground uh, but the thing that impressed me the most is just the wide variety of different play styles that are available. First of all, they just have a ludicrous amount of different vehicles. You have uh, the fighters, which are amazing at taking out other aircrafts. You have the light fighter, which is, you know, fighter, but it's a little bit more maneuverable. At least that's what it seems like. You've got the light bomber and then the bomber. I wasn't too keen on the bomber play style. The bomber is amazing at taking out fortifications down on the ground, which is really how you win a lot of these matches. Like, if you do not have bombers on your team, uh, you're probably not going to win unless your fighters are godlike. If, if your fighters can take out all of the other aircrafts, then you can eventually win. But really, it's all about protecting your bombers and hoping that your bombers are able to take out everything down on the ground, while your fighters are making sure that the enemy bombers and the enemy planes can't take out your stuff down on the ground. And it's because of those dynamics that allows you to approach combat differently every single round. Do you want to be the fighter that goes behind enemy lines to protect your bomber from other aircrafts? Do you want to be a fighter that protects your base? Do you want to be a light bomber that has some killing potential but can also take out things down on the ground? There's so many different ways to play War Thunder and while at first glance it may not be apparent, once you start to invest some time into it, things really start to open up. Uh, personally, I was having a lot of fun with the fighter play style. Like, there is something to say about getting directly behind an enemy aircraft. They don't know you're there, y you have some nice altitude, you start to nosedive towards them, get some speed, get right next to them, and then just blaze them out of the sky. It is one of the most satisfying things I've done in, in a video game. Like that right there, that just those moments, it doesn't happen very often because admittedly I'm still I'm still terrible. Like I, I can do decently well, I can get sort of at the top of the scoreboard every once in a while, but when those moments happen where you just blaze an enemy aircraft instantaneously out of the sky, that that feeling is just so satisfying. And honestly, what keeps me playing War Thunder, it's the key, it's the reason why I continue to go back after hour after hour, now to the 12 hour mark, and I have a feeling even after this video. I'm going to continue to play the game because those moments were so satisfying. Uh, the one thing that I quickly learned, though, is that if you do not use altitude effectively and you do not try to get the altitude advantage over your enemy, uh, you're going to have a bad time in War Thunder. Uh, I assume that this is going to be a lot like uh, the Battlefield franchise, like being in one of those jets where it really didn't matter where you were on the map. It didn't matter if you were near the ground or up above because you could just 
put on the boosters and you could travel at Mach 5 and get away from the enemies and then just zip around that way. That is not the case in War Thunder. Like this is a simulator in a lot of in a lot of respect. And if you do not take advantage of the altitude and take advantage of the speed that can come from altitude, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, the best example of that I can think of is that every once in a while I would see a pilot trying to be a badass. They would be using the terrain to their advantage, using the mountains to block line of sight, zipping under bridges, and while it sounds amazing in concept, it sounds like something you would see in an action movie, in reality, when you're that close to the ground, you can't take advantage of gravity. You can't descend to pick up speed to try to lose the enemy, and while there is something to say about using the terrain to your advantage to block line of sight and to try to make it so that the enemy can't chase you, but there were so many moments when I would see these quote-unquote badasses down down below and I would just use the altitude to my advantage, tip the nose down, use gravity, pick up speed, get right behind them, pull the trigger, and then take them out instantaneously. Like there is a large learning curve to this game and they could have just been new to the series and had no idea what they were doing, but there really is a lot of depth to this game and honestly I don't even think I know half the stuff. Like there's probably a lot of War Thunder veterans right now screaming at why am I doing this or why, you know, you're such a noob, what the hell are you doing? Like I, I admit, like I, I am new to the game and there are probably a lot of things that I do not understand and that's actually what makes War Thunder so appealing is that it does have a, a large learning curve. It is easy to learn at first but to master it it's clear that you need to invest a lot of time. Uh, and then speaking of a large time investment trying to unlock the later tiers of these vehicles like I only got one tier two plane and I, I invested pretty much all of my time in uh, the the USSR I thought that they were a lot of fun and so I basically just stuck with them but over that 12 hours I only unlocked the second tier there are five tiers of planes and the later the tiers the longer and longer it takes to unlock them and so I can't even imagine how long it would take to unlock the, the later ones there is a, you know a, not really necessarily pay to win but there is a way to accelerate it a little bit that is how they earn money like that's how they pay their bills but if you want to do it completely free it is going to take you an eternity uh, the one gripe i have with it though and it's a small one and admittedly i'm slowly starting to warm up to it is that the gameplay can be a little slow especially if you're used to the fast-paced first person shooters that are out on the market when you first jump into your plane it takes you a good couple of minutes to get into the action and then once you're in the action you have to make the decision you know who am i going to go after and then you might get a kill and then if you get that kill you have to go back up and then search for some other planes and if you're playing on a match that doesn't really have a whole lot of enemy pilots you know there are some rounds that are full and some that are around half full uh, you can be flying around for a couple of minutes and not really get into the fray of things for a couple of minutes and so initially this this was one of the biggest turnoffs for me you know i had the whole first person shooter get right back into the action mentality and because I wasn't getting right back into the action once I would die and then I'd have to wait a couple of minutes I was like screw this I just I want to play a game I want to be in the thick of things and having fun but then I realized that's sort of what makes War Thunder War Thunder is that you need to take those couple of minutes to get into the action realize where all of the enemy planes are realize where your planes are and then make your decision based on that information like you really do need to think about who you're gonna go for who you're gonna let by because if you go for the wrong person that might leave you vulnerable to the other guy that's just right behind him and then you're gonna get taken out from him and it's that type of thought process it's that type of spatial awareness which makes War Thunder so much fun and so if you are someone who needs to get right into the action and you you need to be in the thick of things right away you may want to stray away from War Thunder and so overall I am having a lot of fun with War Thunder and I'm glad that you guys recommended it I know I played I think it was Warplanes many many months ago and you guys said that this one was the better of the two and, you know, it's been a while since I played Warplanes, but I'm gonna have to agree. Like, I, I love the depth here, I love the wide variety of different play styles, I love that there is just so much to do, so much to see, and it really is a phenomenal game. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the mix-up of gameplay. Uh, let me know what you think of War Thunder. Have you invested thousands of hours into it? You know, I know that there are a lot of people that have already unlocked, like, the later tiers. Let me know if you guys enjoy this game as much as I do. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.